Hello everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and we're on page nine. I am gonna pull in page eight real quick just to remind you of the background here and then sort of the collection that we have um, featured. And so I'm pulling both of those patterns back in for page nine. I'm gonna start by putting down the tan piece and then we're probably gonna to have to trim that slightly to fit because it's going to be color blocked. Uh, this is the 12 by 12 scrapbook pack. I really like this pattern. Um, it's, it's not bold, but it's just really pretty and delicate. Um, there's a couple that I really like. This is one for sure. And then there's another one that has these really soft flowers that I've already used. And I really like that one a lot too. I'm not crazy about this pattern, but it definitely works with these colors. So I wish Stamperia would do stripes. Um, all their patterns are like this. This is like from the collection pack and that's a pattern. And I think I'd rather have once in a while a stripe, you know, like a masculine looking stripe, um, which I think you could do very easily. Um, and uh, especially like if you looked at old um, upholstery fabrics from something that would have been from this era, you could easily find something that would work with this palette. But, Turns out I don't work for them, <laughs> and they didn't ask me. <laughs> this is a big, bulky album. I haven't done one this big in a long time and the last time I did it it was a calendar collection so six pages works out well because you have one side of a page for each month <clears throat> which works out perfect I have two more sets to go two more sets of pages all right so this is our base and I'm still trying to figure out really what I want to do here. I do have a couple of these prints and a couple, well, three of those and one of these. And I really like this. I think it, I think it looks very romantic. But then I also have um, something a little deeper. So I'm going to pull back the previous page. I like this um, color because it pulls it out here. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, figure out what to do with that. And I definitely have enough from the 12 by 12. But I'm gonna need a second to figure that out. Whatever I do, I wanna make sure when the pages are closed, they don't interfere with each other as you're opening and closing the book. Um, that's something to always keep in mind when you're designing an album, because it does happen. You'll lay it down and then you go to try to open something and it'll stick on the previous page because it's under a flap or attached to the magnet on the opposing page. So. Give me a minute, I'll be back, and we will do something wonderful with this page. Okay, I decided I'm going to do two photo mats on uh, this page that we started on, and I took a quick break. So I've got a 5x5 five five and a 4x4, four four, and this is from the Patterns Collection, and I believe this is from the Scrapbook Collection. And like I said, it's really hard once you take them out of their packs to keep track of it. And since I build out of order, it just happens. Um, but even if you're using different paper or a whole different brand, um, it's, you know, you can make it work, right? The design is the design, which is separate from the paper. So, and this is um, something I don't do very often. Each page is going to be unique. Um, a lot of times I do four designs and then I repeat them uh, twice. Most of the time, actually. It, and to me, it gives me a real sense of symmetry in the album, and that's kind of my signature. Everybody, every, every scrapbooker has sort of that thing they do that makes them different from somebody else, and I think that's one of the things that uh, makes my designs a little bit different. 
Um, but you can always go back and use any design and marry it up and it'll still work. Um, even if you're pulling different page designs from different books, if you want to have a different page for all eight pages, or in this case, all 12 pages. Okay, so that's one photo mat. This is going to be the other. So that's five by five. This is four by four. So there's going to be some overlap, and there's a couple of different ways you can approach that when putting uh, images down. As soon as I get this laid down, I'll share that with you. <clears throat> I have to look closely at the print to make sure it's right side up. And it was. So uh, one of the approaches would be to do a 4x4 four four here and a 3x3 three three here. So let's take a look at what that might look like. Um, I'm going to cut. Let's do 3 and a half by 3 and a half. which is still a relatively large picture. So you could do a three by three here and have a nice mat around it. And so people say, well, what, what's a three by three? Well, uh, two by three is like a school picture. So there are pictures that are that small. And then here's something that looks like a four by four. So it's gonna cut slightly into the other picture. Um, but the other thing you could do, which would be a complete departure from both is, Let's do a six and a half by six and a half and see what it looks like. So imagine this is just one large picture. You've got these backgrounds here. And you have this sort of offset looking corner. So y you have options. Um, you could also do a, a three by three here and two by threes, two of them right here. Um, so there's lots of different options. I know I don't put photos in them, but honestly, um, first of all, I don't take that many photos. But secondly, just trying to keep out, keep up the uh, schedule of two projects a month, that's all I can do. It would take me, I'd get maybe one project a month. So instead of getting 22 to 24 projects a year, you'd get 12. Um, and they wouldn't be pictures of anybody I know. I'd be pulling things out of magazines. <laughs> because I just don't take that many pictures to fill that many albums. So now I'm trying to decide, do I want more of the green revealed and less of the pink? And so to make that final decision, I'm gonna pull in the opposing page. And my instinct is to have more of the pink revealed and less of the green. So I'm gonna glue the green down in its entirety and then I'm going to leave um, this image so that we can tuck a photo behind it if we want to, but then the other option is to just put your photo right on top, right? And another photo right on top here. So you've got a couple of different options. So now that we know the order of things, let's go ahead and get this green photo mat laid down. We're getting close, guys. I've got two more pages because I did 12 early on. And then uh, we're going to start inserting all this stuff into the book. So I'm hoping to have all that done tomorrow. And what does tomorrow mean? Tomorrow means Wednesday, the 14th of December. I'm going to put uh, about a half inch border around it. You could also do, you know, a seven by seven photo right here. And just use the backdrop and not add photo minutes. Okay, again, I'm gonna go just around these edges. I gotta get that real quick. Um, my mom's sick with COVID and I'm worried about her. So I'm gonna leave the whole top and side open. I'm only gluing the corner down. You can always come back and add some additional glue um, once you know which pictures you're using, if you don't need to have all this uh, without adhesive, you can always add a little bit. But this way you have the flexibility to go even as far as here. Okay. All right, guys, so let's put them side by side. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. I like pulling the pattern across like that, and I know you guys have seen it many, many times. So... Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, excuse me, we're down to our last couple of pages 
for this album. The next album up is London's Calling. Just so you know. Be back soon. <laughs>